Do you think the emotional ill health of pregnant women is sufficiently recognised um, and treated? So if they are experiencing severe anxiety, like you were talking about, or stress, do you think that's often taken seriously enough by practitioners? I think the biggest single problem is in depression after delivery, and that's a very, very common problem. We now know, for example, that um, a very large number of women who deliver are really quite so sufficiently unhappy they can't breastfeed, or they have, um, if you like, a, an increased response to anxiety around them. And to some extent, we're beginning to understand the hormonal basis for that. Um, I mean, this, this, this institution was heavily into endocrinology and hormone understanding very early on. We had some of the earliest assays for hormones, so we could actually test them in pregnancy. We're much more sophisticated now. Now we make the hormones, um, or drug companies make them. But I mean, basically, we have all those sophisticated techniques for looking at them in very, very small amounts. And that can be quite useful in working out things. Um, I mean, it's amazing how that has changed in my lifetime. You know, when I first worked on this site, I mean, I've left it, I kept, went to America, I went to Belgium, I've been all around different places, I've worked in my lifetime in many But when I first worked here was in 1970, and in those days, the test for pregnancy was to put a pregnant woman's urine in contact with a toad and see if it ovulated. I mean, now, of course, we can actually test the specific hormone in minute quantities, tiny, tiny amounts, in just a single droplet of urine. So we don't even need a droplet of urine, probably do it even in, in other fluids as well. So things have come a long way. Um, and that together with ultrasound, which has been a, a major improvement in women's healthcare generally, because you can look at the ovaries, the uterus, the baby, um, tumors and so on. That's, that's been a, a very big uh, part of the work that's gone on, which has changed lives. Um, I suppose it's interesting too that, you know, um, maternal death is now a very rare event, but there are still too many babies die, and the commonest cause of babies dying is premature labour. So babies being born prematurely before they're ready at 40 weeks of pregnancy. Bo being born around 35, 34 or even earlier weeks is a major cause of firstly death in babies and secondary severe disability and particularly brain death and there a lot of our research has been focused so we've had experts looking at brain damage and how we can prevent that and we've also made great strides in understanding how we care for a premature baby um, at the moment it's born to really m make sure that the environment in which it's in is much more likely to um, help it on but there is also an issue here because it turns out that quite a lot of disease that we have, heart disease, stroke, high blood pressure, uh, probably osteoporosis in old age, can be somewhat associated with that time of delivery. So the events of delivery being premature can have a very long-term effect on your health when you're 60 or 70.